right here are your video lesson notes for section 2.4 uh, I did some further work with quadratic functions and their graphs a um, little bit of different formatting we have a uh, standard form uh, which is kind of the common way that we see the, the quadratics written uh, but we've also introduced some other forms like vertex form uh, we saw that in section 2.1 uh, a couple things to know about that A value, if it's positive, uh, that's kind of the first thing that we look at. That would tell you that your graph is going to be opening upward. If A is positive, if A is negative, then it would be opening downward. Uh, so we're going to look at this first example right here. So the x squared minus 4x minus 5. Uh, our A value right here is positive 1. So we know this graph would open upward. And that's what you're seeing right here in part A. Uh, the other thing we're showing that you can tell really quickly is the y-intercept. Remember to get a y-intercept, all you would have to do is sub in an x uh, value of 0, and that would give you your y-intercept. And also what we'll see later on, if I want my x-intercept, uh, then I would sub in a 0 for y, and then solve. So two things that we can tell just super easy right off the bat is the direction of the graph as well as a y-intercept. Next thing we're looking at here is the axis of symmetry or the line of symmetry, same thing. Uh, that's the imaginary line, this dotted line that you see right here that runs right down the middle of the graph. The vertex of the graph is always on the axis of symmetry, so that's a good thing to keep in mind. There's a formula for that, axis of symmetry. Um, X equals negative B over 2A, I'm sure that rings a bell, you've seen that in the past. Uh, this is actually in your formula booklet. Uh, that you get for all of your tests. Um, so just good to know that it is in there just in case you forget it. If we were going to apply that formula to uh, this same example that we're already starting with, uh, so we have negative b, so negative negative 4 over 2 times a. So you're getting the setup that you see right here. Keep in mind that this is the equation of a line, it's not a single point. So you always have to write it as an equation. Uh, it's a vertical line, so we got to write it as x equals 2. Just a side note on that. Um, because your vertex is always on the axis of symmetry, uh, when you get the axis of symmetry, that also gives you the x-coordinate of your vertex. So we already know that our vertex, that you see here, is going to have an x-coordinate of 2, since that's where the axis of symmetry is. Some further information that you can figure out about this guy. Uh, the next would be the x-intercepts. So remember, for x-intercepts, all you would have to do is 7 and 0 for y, and then solve for x. And that's exactly what we've been doing this chapter while solving quadratics. So if I replace my y with 0 and solve this guy by factoring, then I get my x-intercepts at negative 1 and positive 5. So those are marked on the graph. You'll see those. Uh, something to keep in mind, your vertex and your axis of symmetry are always smack dab in the middle between your two x-intercepts. So if there's some cases where all you're going to get are your x-intercepts. Uh, we need to recognize that my axis of symmetry is runs through the midpoint of my x-intercepts. So if all that I knew were my x-intercepts were negative 1 and positive 5, I should be able to figure out that my axis of symmetry runs through positive 2 because it's the center of negative 1 and positive 5. And that's what you're seeing right here with uh, what is boxed in that statement. Uh, keep this format in mind. You're going to see this in the very last example of these notes, um, sometimes called intercept form or we would just say it's factored form uh, for the quadratic that we're working with. Uh, the next part on this is uh, just rewriting this into vertex form. Um, and we did this earlier on. Um, I, I gave an example of this in section 2.1 um, for how you could uh, take, take a quadratic like this one and rewrite it into vertex form. It's just that completing the square process that we've already been doing uh, this chapter. So um, if you ignore the negative 5 for a minute, and if I just complete the square, then x squared minus 4x plus 4 would complete the square. And if I am adding 4, then I also need to take away 4 so that I keep my value the same. And just a little cleanup on that, and you get this look right here. 
Uh, this is a really important concept because if you can put something into this form, you automatically get the vertex of the graph. So right here at positive 2, it's always the opposite on that. And negative 9 is going to be the vertex of this graph. And so you're seeing right here, this is kind of the general form that we would I would refer to as vertex form. Uh, so you have H and K as your vertex. And then again, here's that same A value. Notice that it's factored out. That's something you're going to see as we move down to the uh, second half of these notes here. All right, so here's just another example. Um, and again, uh, th the main idea of this is being able to graph a parabola. Um, for the most part without a calculator. So all that information that we just covered are all the key features that you should need in order to be able to create a graph for any quadratic function that you just like one that you see like this. So uh, if, if we were to ask to graph this uh, parabola that you see right here, then we can use all that same information that we just did uh, on, the, on the prior example in order to create an accurate graph. So we, we would start out with those same basic uh, easy concepts. Our a value is negative, so we already know the direction of the graph. Um, I can easily come up with my y-intercept right here by replacing x with 0. So notice if that is 0 and that is 0, I am left with positive 5 as my y-intercept, so we can plot that point uh, pretty quickly. Next would be our axis of symmetry. So if you do your negative b over 2 times a, you get your line of symmetry. So that's the next thing I would draw in, and you can see the dotted line over here. So we drew in the axis of symmetry. Remember that also tells you now the x-coordinate of your vertex. Uh, we know the x-coordinate is 9 fourths. So the next thing you would need to get is the y-coordinate of your, of your vertex. We know the x-coordinate, so the next thing we got to come up with is the y-coordinate, and that's what you're going to see right over here after this next step. I do this process personally, I do this just a little bit differently and I explain that in the video notes for uh, lesson 2.1 um, and you'll also see kind of the way I do it is the same way the book does it. Um, so this one's just slightly different. You can either model it after the example that you see here or you can do it the way that the book teaches it and which would be the same way that I explained it in lesson 2.1. So uh, you, you can you know, just do what works for you at this point as long as you can uh, simply take a quadratic um, rewrite the quadratic into vertex form like the way that you see here so that you can identify the complete vertex. That's the main idea. The method that you use doesn't really matter. So uh, real quick explanation here again of what they're doing on this. Uh, remember that you can't complete the square until you get an a value of 1. So in this case we had to factor out the negative 2 so that I will be able to go through my completing the square process. So for each term, we divided out negative 2 from each term, and that's what's giving you the look that you see right here. So next step would be to complete the square. Remember to do that, you take your b value, which is all this fraction, divide it by 2, so that's going to give me 9 fourths, and then square that. So I get 81 over 16 as my c value to complete the square. Uh, if I am adding 81 over 16, then I also need to subtract 81 over 16 so that I keep this value the same. Uh, the rest of this is just a little cleanup. So uh, you would now combine like terms right here. You would take this and put it in factored form. Remember one way to do that is if you take your b value and divide it by 2, which would be negative 9 over 4, that's always the value that goes into this when you put that into factored form. So for me, that's just the quick way that I'm able to go from here to here in one quick shot. Anyway, just a little further cleanup. So we distributed that negative 2, and we are here. Uh, so we have now put this thing into vertex form. So you now can identify the vertex as positive 9 fourths, positive 121 over 8. So that could now be placed on the graph. The very last step would be then to come up with your x-intercepts. So remember we come up with x-intercepts by setting the entire quadratic equal to zero and then just solve it by factoring. And that's all you're seeing in step D. So we set the entire quadratic equal to zero. We are solving by factoring.
that's going to give you the x-intercepts at negative one-half and positive five. And those could now be placed on the graph, and you now have plenty of information in order to draw an accurate graph. So you had uh, two points right here for the x-intercepts, you got the y-intercept, you got the vertex. That's plenty of information in order to be able to come up with an accurate graph. All right, last part on this, uh, just a few examples for how you could come up with uh, the equation of the quad of the parabola from the graph. Uh, so you're seeing three different examples on information in the way they might give it to you. Uh, so first things first, keep this form in mind right here. So if you don't already have that written down or printed out, have that in front of you because I'm going to be using this. I'm going to start plugging in some numbers into this for these last three examples. So the way this is going to start is uh, if you have the vertex, start there. So I'm going to plug in my H and K from the vertex. That's the best place to start. And then the last step will be solving for A. So that's what you're going to see on these last couple examples. Uh, so right here, here's my vertex. So I'm plugging that in right there for H. Uh, I got the negative 11 is the second half of the vertex. So then the only other thing I would need to know is my A value. And simply to do that, if you have any other point on the graph, like this one that you see right here, I can sub in this for X, and I can sub in this guy for Y, and then solve for A. So here we are replacing X with 0, replacing Y with 7, and now all I would have to do is solve for A. So if you solve that equation for A, you're going to get an A value of 2. So I can now take that 2 and stick it right here for A. And so that's the equation of the quadratic or of the parabola in vertex form, which is fine. Uh, and in some cases, we can leave it like that. But you always have to check the directions. If they ask you to put it in standard form like this one, then you got to FOIL, distribute the 2, and then combine like terms by bringing in the minus 11 at the end in order to get this look that you see here, and that's standard form. Pretty similar idea on this one. Um, again, if, on this one, I could take the exact same approach that I took on this one, and that would work just fine. Um, another option would be to still replace, um, well, let me go to here. So if I have an x-intercept at negative 8 and another x-intercept at positive 2, um, then I can use factored form and get this look since I know the x-intercepts. So again, all I need to come up with is the a value. So if I take another point on the graph, like this one, and I can replace my x's with negative 3, I can replace my y with 25, and that's the look that you're seeing right here, and now I can solve for a. So that's going to give me an a value of negative 1. So I can now take that negative 1, whoops, and stick it right here for negative 1. And now I would FOIL and then bring in the negative 1. And here you go, you got standard form. One last example. Uh, and again, this really is not that different from the first one that we just did a minute ago. Uh, but again, I have my vertex at negative 1, 0. So sticking those in for H and K. I just need one other point on the graph. So here we go. 1 is X and 8 is Y. So if I place those in here for x and y, I can now solve for a. So there's our a value. I can now take that value, plug it in for a, FOIL. So after you FOIL, you'll get this, then distribute the 2, and there you go. You got standard form.